الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome again to the stories of the prophets peace be upon them And we are continuing with the story of Ibrahim عليه السلام And I told you the last time how this great building الكعبة in Mecca that Muslims go around How did it start? How was it built by this great prophet Ibrahim and his son Ishmael, Ismail, peace be upon them all, when they completed the building, when upon the completion of the construction of Al Kaaba, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and Ismail, peace be upon him, recited a prayer, a very beautiful prayer, that has got a meaning. In the history of religion, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about this prayer. And remember, Ibrahim and Ismail, when they raised the foundations of the house, with this prayer, they were saying, "Our Lord, accept this service from us, for you are all hearing and all knowing. Our Lord, make of us Muslims." Submitting to you, bowing to you, willingly, and of our descendants, Muslims, submitting to you, bowing to you, willingly. O oh, our Lord, show us our place, and where should we worship for the celebration of the rituals? And O oh, our Lord, turn unto us and give us your mercy. For you are oft returning most merciful. O oh, our Lord, send from them, send from among our descendants a messenger of their own from our descendants who shall rehearse your signs to them and instruct them in scriptures and wisdom and sanctify them. For you are the exalted in might. You are the wise. So it was a request that in the future was granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a messenger among the descendants of Ismail and Ibrahim, Muhammad peace upon him, who would teach them how to be wise, how to do their rituals, and how to purify their hearts for the sake of their Lord, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the building was finished, but Hajj has not started. The pilgrimage did not start. So with the Kaaba built, the order came from Allah Almighty for Ibrahim, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, to call people all over to come for pilgrimage to this holy and sacred place, the house of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the Quran and proclaim the pilgrimage among them they will come to you on foot and mounting on every kind of camel lean on account of journeys through deep and distant distant mountains and highways different routes of travel they will come to you Ibrahim was amazed Ibrahim was amazed. How, how could they hear his voice? I mean, if he shouted, who would hear his voice? Voice. How would people come from different routes, and they call them highways, in, in, between mountains and into the desert? 
How would they know? So Ibrahim said, Oh Allah, my voice would not reach far enough. So how could they hear me? The reply came from Allah through the angel Gabriel to Ibrahim, peace be upon him. You are ordered just simply to call and we shall make your voice reach them. So, Ibrahim السلام, was ordered to leave Mecca and go outside Mecca to a certain mountain, the same mountain where humanity on earth started, where Adam met Eve, the Mount of Arafat. It is called also the Mountain of Mercy, Jabal Rahmah, because the mercy of Allah descends on people on the day of Hajj who gather around that mountain. So he was ordered to go to this specific mountain, now marked with a small, small white stone as a mark to distinguish it from other mountains. And that's where Muslims gather all over every year on the ninth day of the last lunar month, Dhul Hijjah, without gathering on that specific day, at that specific place, there's no Hajj for anyone. That is the order of Allah. So, he went to the mountain of Arafat and went to the top of that mountain and he started calling people to come and have pilgrimage to the house of Allah and start Hajj. He was alone in the desert. His, vo his voice was simply a human voice. No, no one could hear him. There was no one around him at that time. But it was a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his voice was carried to the people in all corners of Arabia and around it. And not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his divine order made the hearts of the people love Al-Kaaba. They did not know what it is, but they loved it. They had, a, they had this feeling, there is a building in that place, we should go and visit it. And with that, they came walking and on camels. They chose lean camels that they can travel. It's mentioned in the Quran. And they thronged towards Mecca. And that was the start of Al-Hajj. A miracle started pilgrimage. Otherwise, why would people come to this remote building in Arabia? But again, the whole story is full of miracles after miracles. So the Hajj started and it never stopped. Even when people became disbelievers, they continued Hajj. Yes, they changed some of the rituals. They, they added some sayings, taking partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the Hajj, but in general, the Hajj continued the way it was prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam later on fixed the wrong parts of Al-Hajj and showed them the exact way to continue Hajj. Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to live in Palestine even after building Al-Kaaba, and even after civilization started to develop around Mecca, and even after people started to start uh, to go to Hajj and visiting the Holy Land of, Al of Mecca, we see this in the Quran in so many events and so many incidents in history that relates to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And it is enough to see the pilgrimage today. Every part of the pilgrimage is related to the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The building itself, Al-Kaaba, going around it, Zamzam, the water, the holy water next to it, the movement between Al-Safa and Al-Marwa, relating to his wife Hajar, the slaughter of the animals, the stoning of the, the devil, uh, every part 
is related to Ibrahim السلام, and his family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave Ibrahim two noble children and both of them became prophets, Ismail and Ishaq, Ishmael and Isaac, peace be upon them. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored this noble prophet with a status of no one else but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is called Khalilul Rahman. Khalilul Rahman. And this is mentioned in the Quran. For Allah did take Ibrahim as a Khalil. What is a Khalil? And now the city where his grave is, is called Al Khalil. What is Al Khalil? What is Khalilul Rahman? The word Khalil is the closest friend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Ibrahim to be a friend of God. This is a status that is not given to anyone else except him and Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Prophet sallallahu says, Ana Khalilul Rahman. I am also a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that this is also mentioned in the Quran that Ibrahim is Khalilul Rahman. Khalil is a friend that is very much beloved and the closest of friends that no one else would reach that level. So that's how noble Ibrahim is. In many incidents, in many sayings, Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, indicates that the best of prophets after him, if we want to order prophets, the highest of prophets, they are, of course, they are all equal when it comes to the message. We do not distinguish between them. This is also in the Quran. We do not distinguish between prophets when it comes to the message. They all came with the same message. But also it is mentioned in the Quran that prophets are not of the same status. Some of them are higher than others. The highest of prophets is Muhammad, peace be upon him. The next prophet in status is Ibrahim, Abraham alayhi salam. And then comes three prophets, Moses, Jesus, and Noah, Nuh alayhi salam. Musa, wa Isa, wa Nuh, peace be upon them all. But the highest is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, and the next is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim, peace be upon him, continued his life of piety and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala busying himself with worship and calling his people to the truth and the religion of the one God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates in the Quran a unique conversation between him and Ibrahim alayhi salam to show how close he is to Allah and to show his faith. Behold, Ibrahim said, My Lord, show me. How do you give life to the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him back, do you then not believe? To this Ibrahim replied, verily I believe, but I want to rest my heart. Which means that I, ha I am already a believer, but I, there is levels of belief. I believe in you, I believe in the, in the one God, but I want to take my belief to a higher level. I want to see it with myself, with my own eyes, so my heart would totally settle. So, we could be believers, but have questions. It is okay. Just ask, and you will see the answers. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, was a believer. The, this question from Ibrahim does not mean at all that he had doubts, but he wanted to reach a higher level of faith. Scholars say that there is something called assurance of knowledge, al yaqeen. There is ilm al yaqeen wa ayn al yaqeen. Ilm al yaqeen is knowledge without the hesitation. Ayn al yaqeen is knowledge 
without hesitation, with seeing it yourself, which is a higher level of knowledge. So Ibrahim السلام, had assurance of his knowledge and his faith. There was no question, but he wanted to reach the higher level of faith by seeing it himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to take four birds and slaughter them. And Ibrahim did. Then the order came, mix them, cut them into pieces, grind, grind them and, cut and, and mix them and keep their heads aside. And he did. Now, take this mixture and cut it into four pieces. So, every part will have some of the four birds into it. And he did. And then he was given. So, you want to see it? You have to be tired for it. So, he was ordered to climb four mountains and leave that one part on each mountain. And he did. Not knowing what is the meaning all of, of all of that. Now, his, the heads were still with him. He was ordered to keep the heads. So, he, or, he was ordered to go down. And now, he was ordered to call the birds to come to him. And to his amazement, these parts, mixed parts, came flying. And in front of his eyes, separated. And in front of his eyes, became living birds without heads and then each bird without a head would come and put itself under the head and the head would be fixed on the bird in front of his eyes he's seeing the miracle of life happening in front of his eyes and then the bird would fly in front of his eyes and this is all mentioned in the Quran. Ibrahim said, this is in the Quran. My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. He said, do you then not believe? He said, verily, I truly believe. But so that my heart is at ease. He said, take four birds, tame them, cut them, and mix them. And then call upon them. Put a portion of, of them on every hill and call upon them. They will come to you flying with speed. Then know, know that Allah is exalted in power and wise. That is the, this is, this is a special thing given to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also asked about Suhuf Ibrahim, the books of Ibrahim. What are they? What, he was given scriptures. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tell, told us that the scriptures of Ibrahim contained lessons. And he narrated to us one of the sayings, one of the lessons in the scriptures of Ibrahim. He was given a book called the scriptures of Ibrahim, Suhuf Ibrahim. He would say in, the, in, the, in that scripture, O proud king, I did not send you to gather the world for each other, but I appointed you to respond to me in prayers. And I ordered you as a king to respond to the prayers of the victims of injustice do them justice, for I do not reject it. If they call upon me, I shall answer them. Even if they are unbelievers and they are being done injustice to, I will help them. So in, the, in, the, in these books, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes the importance of justice to everyone, believers or not. Ibrahim السلام, also advised his people to allocate time to worship Allah alone, separately, reflecting upon his creation. 
and he was an example of a great worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ibrahim alayhi salam, inna Ibrahim kana ummah. He was a nation by himself. For a, for a period of time, there was no other believers but Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he is to that level. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the in the Quran salutes Ibrahim and puts his blessing and prayers for every from everyone on Ibrahim until the day of judgment. That is the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the next lesson, inshaAllah, we will continue with the story of the descendants of Ibrahim, Ismail and Yaqub and Isaac, but we will first turn to the story of Lut, which happened during the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Thank you for following up. Barakallahu feekum. See you inshallah next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.